Greetings, people of the world! Matthew back with you here at Navora Autism for the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. It is day 9 of 75 here for EDSS as he continues on his journey here at the Bent Branch Meadows, which is where we are currently situated. And we've now reached the point in the game when, um, when you ever you start up your file again after it's been saved, whenever you come back to it, you can now get a recommendations list, and this can refer you to various quests that are made available to you. They can be um, the important quests like these two, and they can also be quests that you can go to somewhere that where it is located in order for you to start doing so. Um, you can click on the um, quest that you want to see, and it will give you a reference to where it is on the map that you can go in order to find that quest. So that's very helpful to you. So that one, as I mentioned, was able to show is not that far from Bent Branch Meadows over here. Um, this one, which is a level 12 quest, that's a little further south of where we are, but not that far away. And there's also a couple of other quests, so we're going to... We're going to take the time to take on some of these quests before we get involved with the two um, important ones here at level 12, which are being offered by Katha and also by Elgar over there. So let's take on some of these alternate quests. Um, and close to close out, press select, and go to close. So let's start by speaking with Kukuvachi and see what she has to say, I guess. Level 10 quest called Not a Material Girl. An old dawn merchant by the name of Kukuvachi seeks an adventurer to make some inquiries on his behalf. Oh, this is a man. Okay, sorry about that. You there, adventurer. Yes, you will suffice. I have a job I need performed and I'm willing to pay the going rate. A trifling task, really. I simply need you to ask the locals here at Bent Branch Meadows what the head wrangler covets most in all the world. This is a private matter, lest you doubt, so be sure to inquire discreetly. And please, for the love of Nord, do not reveal that you are in my employ. In fact, it would be best if my name wasn't mentioned at all. Yeah, something tells me little Kukuvachi here has a thing for Miss Keitha. So, we have to go speak with various people who are connected to Keitha to find out what exactly she is interested in. Yes, I guess Kukuvachi here wants to make a bit of a move, as it were, on Miss Keitha. So, let's start by speaking with Ethelrith here. See what she has to say. What does Katha cover most? Why would you wish to know this some... Wait a minute, that old old merchant put you up to this, didn't he? How could you tell? <sighs> He's wasting his time with that approach. If the man is serious about honing a chocobo, he'd be better served by convincing Katha of his intent to provide the bird with a proper care and attention. Well, <laughs> you heard it straight from the chocobo's mouth, I guess. <laughs> yeah. There is no interest in helping out Miss Katha in such a manner because it seems like everyone's already on to the eff efforts and actions of Kukuvachi. Let's see what Margeria has to say. Oh, wait a minute, this isn't... Okay, sorry, wrong person. Um, let's check the map here to see where, it sh where the person is we need to speak to. Okay, they're further over this direction. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, that could hurt quite a bit. Um... Alright, where did I see you? Okay. Yeah, Leo Dare, you're doing a bit of, a uh, hiding on me. Let's see what you have to say. Katha? The only thing Katha wants is for her birds to be happy. If she cares for anything besides the well-being of the chocobos, then I've not heard of it. Well, that's pretty straightforward. And it seems like no one's all that interested in, um, telling what Katha is really into, because apparently... No one gave the memo to Mr. Kukovace. <laughs> and let's round it out with Bernard, who we've spoken to before. What about Miss Katha? You're looking to stir up trouble, son. If you think some shiny trinket will move our heart, then you don't know her. Uh, th that is, Miss Katha is only interested in her birds. Listen here, adventurer. If your actions cause her any distress, the woodwellers will come down on you so hard your boots will leak blood. Got that? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Just, just asking. Nothing more than that. I, I wish to mean no harm to anyone. I am simply speaking on behalf of a little dwarf who, I guess, wants to hit on Miss Katha. So, yeah, let's go back over to Kukuvachi and give him the bad news. Well, do you plan to keep me in suspense? I must have a chocobo for my very... What's this? They told you nothing of her material desires? 
Ugh, the stubbornness of these Kodanians is infuriating! And I should have known better than to hire a buffoon for such delicate work. Hey, I only did what you told me. To think the amount of guilt I have wasted on this fruitless venture! Oh, cease your mewling. I promised you a reward, and a reward you shall have. Now leave me to my misfortune. <laughs> yeah, we'll take it. Alright, we got another 1710 experience. So yeah, let's go over now this direction to, because we ran into Margeria, who has a level 10 quest available for us, so let's go ahead and take that one on now. Miss Margeria, now I'm here on legitimate business. Level 10, where the heart is. Margeria has information that may interest wealthy adventurers. Correct me if I'm wrong, but are you not an adventurer? I've seen you running to and fro, face set in grim determination as adventurers are wont to do, hence my presumption. If so, I have information which might interest you. Rumor has it that plots within the lavender beds are to be auctioned off. What's more, bidders need not even be Gridanian. Any old adventurer or wandering minstrel with, could, with sufficient funds, purchase land and build their own home. Considering how discerning the elementals tend to be about who can and cannot reside within the tallest wood, it's rather surprising, if not hard to believe. But if there is truth to these rumors, well, who hasn't dreamed of owning their own forest cottage, perhaps with a small vegetable garden and a stable large enough for a chocobo or two? You know, you should travel to take you should your travels take you to the mirror planks where the ferry to the lavender beds is, perhaps you'll find a twin out of representative who can tell you more. I'd be shocked if they weren't involved in such a monumental change in policy. And so, yes, we're now going to speak with someone named Emblin, who is going to be quite a bit south of here, so let's hit that sprint button and be on our way. So while that's going on, while I'm running over to the mirror planks, um, I wanted to talk about um, what happened during World Autism Awareness Day for my event. Um, unfortunately, the turnout wasn't as good as I hoped it would be, um, but that shouldn't be surprising considering about how I talked about people who I was hoping that would help me out, were not willing to do so, um, which is a shame. Um, but what really upset me more was the fact that a lot of people on Facebook forums about people with autism were really distressed over World Autism Awareness Day, and they were acting very in a very hostile manner towards organizations that were doing the Light It Up Blue initiative, because they felt that they aren't a rep good representative of what an autistic person should be, and they feel like that such organizations are threats to who they are as people, as autistics, and so they wanted to basically rebel against such organizations by doing a Lighted Up Gold initiative, which, to be quite honest, I don't understand why, because the ultimate objective is to um, bring greater awareness to people who have autism. But the way they were talking on Facebook what really set me off very badly. And it, it was really disappointing to see that they don't seem to have... Um, that the way they approach it, it's almost like they almost don't want to have people be concerned about them. It's like leave us alone, We don't let us do what we want, let us be who we are, which I can't blame them for thinking in that manner, but to do it in such a hostile way, I found very disheartening. And we achieved the difficulty rank unlock by getting the Lancers 10 entry complete, and looks like we completed all of our hunting logs for the Lancer level 1. Yes, we did. We've we killed off three ladybugs, ground squirrels and fungwars, mitlings, opopo, opo opos, microchews, black gefts, bog yarzons, hoglets, anoles, dynamites, and tree slugs. So yeah, we're now complete with the first level of the Lancer's hunting log. So now we can move on to level two. And so we're going to start seeing other monsters like this getting recognized in such a similar manner. Um, looks like most of these enemies are going to be in, also within the Black Shroud. And in fact, yeah, it's they're all going to be in the Black Shroud, but they're going to be in different parts of the Black Shroud, so... Well, mission accomplished on that, so that's pretty cool. So let's talk to Emblem here, of the Twin Adder. Oh, good day to you, sir. What can I... Ah, you wish to know about the auctions. Very well, allow me to explain. 
There's a growing concern that our immigration policies may have been a tad restrictive in the past, and so the Seed Seer Council and the Order of the Twin Adder have, with the blessings of the Elementals, decreed that the Lavender Beds be set aside for adventurers. Adventurers who possess the necessary funds to purchase and maintain their estates, that is. Should you look upon the beds with your own eyes, though, I think you'll agree that it's well worth the price. Have a word with the skipper over yonder, she'll ferry you across. A recruit station at the pier can tell you more about the beds you've once, once you've arrived. So to proceed with the quest where the heart is, Lavender Beds, you may visit any residential ward within the Lavender Beds. And so, that we shall do. Let's make that journey. I will indeed be traveling to you. Specified ward. Let's get this out of the way since we can't really get to such a point yet. Um, let's just go to the first ward. Um, if I can. Um. Okay, how come I can't... Yes, travel to first ward, lavender beds. There we go. I knew there was going to be a button for it. I guess it was triangle. But yeah, it was really a shame to see a lot of negative connotations from people who have autism, like myself, as well as Asperger's Syndrome, who are very... Um, hateful of people who are involved with um, various autism organizations. When the uh, when our collective objective is to bring greater awareness to people of autism, we should be working together, not alone. And so, if their initiative to light it up gold rather than blue is based on hatred and animosity then I really would prefer to continue to light it up blue. That, that's just how I feel. So as we've arrived here at Lavender Beds, let's see if we can speak with people who might be of interest to us. As soon as, of course, as we get the load in. So yeah, we've spoken, we've made it here to the Lavender Beds, and there's also an Ethernet shard. Um, okay, we don't want to go to any location in particular, we just want to speak with this guy from the Twin Adder. Greetings, adventurer, and welcome to the Lavender Beds. Oh, you come at the behest of a Gordonian woman. I regret to inform you that these plots are reserved for adventurers. Your friend will not be permitted to take part in the auctions. You, on the other hand, will be more than welcome to participate. Should you have a mind to purchase a plot for yourself, pray speak with the resident caretaker. He can guide you through the process. Well... I guess we learned everything we need to go know about here. So, yeah, let's take a moment to really look at this place. Because, yeah, it looks really cool. All the places you could possibly call your home. But you really need to rack up a lot of money in order to be able to use stuff like that here. So, for now, I'm just going to go back and bring the mission to its completion. So, I will see you guys back when we reunite with Margeria to let her know of the news that she will not be able to take part in the auction, so be back in a moment. Okay, so made it back to Margeria, so let's break the bad news to her. Good to see you again, friend. Did you learn anything about the lavender beds? Oh, adventurous only? Is that so? Well, these are trying times, as it's more important than ever for Gridania to attract capable individuals like yourself. I'm sure that one day my dreams will come to fruition. One day I'll have my own chalk cottage and stables, filled with my beloved chocobos. And so with that, this quest is completed. So, there we go. And you can now teleport to the residential district, because this act it, the Lavender Beds Ethernet is now accessible. For the lavender beds, then they can be accessed to the Gordanian Aetherite. Alright, mission accomplished in that regard. So, with that taken care of, let's go ahead, because I see another um, side quest that we can take on. And it's going to be over here to the right. Lucolo has something that he would like for us to do. So, let's see what he has in store. Level 11, Extending Fences. Lucalo at Bent Branch Meadows wishes you to procure fence building materials from dire mites. Oh, that sounds interesting. Greeting, sir. You have the distinctive of an adventurer. Might I trouble you for some assistance? In recent days, a heartless cat has been sneaking into the ranch to scare all chocobos. The poor birds are in a state of, of constant unease, wondering when the next fight will come. 
It is my hope that extending the fencing will help the, keep the intruder out. To that end, could I ask you to procure some strands of diamond web? They make for a surprisingly sturdy construction material. You should be able to obtain the web from the diamonds themselves. There are usually a few to be found roaming the lands around the land ranch. Six strands should be sufficient. No, oh, six it is. So let's check our map to see where we can find them. They'll be to the north of us. Very well. Let's make a run for it. Let us make a run for it in the direction of where the diamites are. Ooh. Hit the ground running and I see one that's by itself right over here. So let's go ahead and start beating up some diamites. Yeah, take this, you scary. Take this, you scary ugly. Oh. Slice you up so I can take your webs from you. Even though you're a scorpion, not a spider. Yeah, that makes no sense to me. How can you have webs when you're clearly looking like a scorpion? This makes no sense to me. And I'm gonna jump right into you so I can destroy you from the inside out. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna have fun that way. And so far, I'm holding my own quite well. Alright, there's another one down. Now be careful, since these are feral, they will... Um, get... If you're too close, they will start attacking you uh, together. So, yeah, that's what's happening here. Hopefully it does not get too problematic. If that third dynamite comes around, then we could have a real problem on our hands. Alright, halfway home. Let's make sure that that other diamite does not come over here. Because that would be quite dangerous if that did indeed happen. And thankfully it does not, so we can go ahead and finish this one off. And then once that's taken care of, we'll be one away from completing this task. And it's amazing how just killing a few enemies will make things... It, it only takes like a couple, less than a couple of minutes to get a task like this finished. Yeah, th these tasks, a lot of them are intended to go by very quickly, so you can complete them and get the experience bonuses and the guild bonuses very fast. I mean, it's only day 9, and I'm at experience level 11, and once we get the reward experience, we will be at experience level 12. So let's go ahead and let... Lucolo know that we have successfully completed the task that he required of us. Um, looks like we're gonna have to go around. So that is indeed what we shall do. Running around to the opposite side, ensuring that we can get back into Bedbrush Meadows. And you know what, before I go anywhere, um, important information here. Talk to, uh, if you see anyone who's a merchant and a mender, um, talk to them for an opportunity to repair your gear, because if you don't repair your gear regularly, um, and it doesn't cost that much, but if you don't repair it, then it will be reduced to 10% effectiveness, no matter what that item is. So, always keep an eye on your gear to make sure that it is in good condition, and make sure to repair it regularly. So, let's go over here and let Lucolo know of our victory here. And that he has his diamite web. Oh, you have returned. Tell me, were you able to procure the diamite web I requested? Oh, I most certainly did. There you go. Yes, yes, these will do nicely. These are perfect binding posts together. Were I still in Ishgard, I would never entertain the notion of using such a bizarre material in this manner. Oh, did I not mention I was from Ishgard? Aye, well, Gridania is, in actual fact, my second home. My native land was once famous for its chocobo stables. No man in Eorzea could speak of the creatures without his thoughts turning naturally to Ishgard. Sadly, however, that time has passed. I left my homeland to accept employment here at the ranch, instructing others in the methods of chocobo husbandry. Yet I have found that it is often I who am the recipient of others' instruction, and on many great matters. Truly, one can never know what life may hold in store. And with that, we get enough experience points to get up to experience level 12. Success, and we also learn a new skill called Heavy Thrust. So that's pretty cool that we are including a new skill in our repertoire. So let's go over to the recommendations list by pressing the pause button. We go, go over to Duty, and it'll highlight the recommendations. Um, three more 
that are close by, hopefully. Um, walking the planks, I'm pretty sure, yeah. And fifth, same place, if you break faith. This one, this one is closer. Let's try if you break faith. So, um, if you're wondering what the um, angry icons are, those are fates. Those are the special challenges that you really need to have a lot of assistance on if you want to succeed in completing. Either that or get your experience level really, really high. Well, actually you can't because you're only allowed to go six levels above the fate before you can no longer perform it at the experience level you currently are at. So let's say, for example, you're performing a level 10 fate, but your experience level is 17. You'll be forced to do something called a level sync, which will force your experience level to go back down to 16. Um, you probably saw this, if you remember, in a couple of the important quests, but it was to put you down to four levels above the recommended level. So just to let that you know about that. So let's take on Phinea's quest, the level 10 quest, level 12 quest, if ye break faith. Phinea has some work for a meddlesome adventurer. <laughs> that don't sound good, if it's a meddlesome adventurer. Another gold stump adventurer desperate to stick his nose in everyone's business, is it? Then seek out the groundskeeper of the Tamtama Deepcroft. You'll find him in a shack just outside the entrance, as the hermit is all too happy to live close to his work. When last I patrolled that area, I could hear him swearing inside his shack from the road. I know not what vexes the man, but I suspect he'll welcome your presence more than I. <laughs> yeah, someone's clearly pissed off. Yeah, we've noticed quite a few of the wood whalers are not that happy to be having the presence of adventurers in their midst. Well, if you're not happy to see us, then why are you um, accepting us to take quests from you? That's what I want to know. Why the hostility if you're not wanting our assistance? Hello there, Balar. After a bit of work, are ye? I have a task what needs doing. Take these Nemea lilies and leave them at the top of each barrow. Ye doubtless seen the bones returned to life by foul magics, shambling around and harassing their surviving comrades. It hurts me soul to see it, adventurer. I can't abide such blasphemy. Tis me hope that these lilies soothe their spirits and help them return to the matron's bosom. See me when you've finished. And so, to accomplish that, we go over this direction where we can find the necessary bar the necessary barrows. And these are not like wheelbarrows. These are little hills. Little spires, these are, are the barrows. And so we can highlight it and set down a Nemea lily. And prepare for battle because we were warned about this. Or maybe not. Okay, that's strange. I thought we were actually going to engage in combat. Because I have done that before in this quest. Where I had to engage the enemy in order to get a clean unobstructed line to place these lilies. Well, thankfully this diamite was blocked out by the barrow. So I didn't have to take a challenge from him. So let's go over this way now. One more barrel to go. Okay, yeah, this one we will have to engage in combat. Oh! Oh, but... Oh, boy. We could have just gotten ourselves in a world of trouble here. Yeah, because we've attracted the attention of two glowering glowflies, and these things are going to bleed through my HP like crazy. In fact, exact, that's exactly what they're doing. I need to get this dynamite out of the way right now and make a break for it. Oh, no, run! 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 Jeez, run! And we gotta get ourselves free and clear because these things will keep chasing you. Ugh. Yeah, you gotta be careful with these two. With the glowing glow, glow fly, with the glowing glow fly, flies. Ugh. What a tongue twister. Glowing glow flies. Yeah, it's not the easiest thing in the world to say. Yeah, we need to make sure we can get in. Place that lily, quickly. Get it off, get it off. It counts, good. Get out of here. No, get out of here. Get out of here. We do not want to engage in combat with them because those things can kill you. As H.C. Bailey would say. Alright, run, run. Just keep running, just keep running. Alright. Bilar, mission accomplished. And with my health intact. You've done holy work this eve, lad. I cannot fathom what could have dried the dead to rise up and seek to do us harm, but I pray that this helps put an end to it. May the Rachin watch over and keep you safe. 
Mission accomplished and another 2,625 experience points. That is awesome. Alright, so there should be two more quests over here. Well, there's a level 13 over there. But I want to take on the two that are over on the right. The two level 11s. Let's see what's going on with those. Yeah, completing certain quests will unlock new ones. Like we, like with the important level missions, um, there will be some that are not as important that will also in turn um, unlock new missions for you to do. So don't be afraid to take a look around and see what's available to you. It would definitely help you out as far as building up experience is concerned because you're going to need all the experience you can get. So yes, here are our two um, additional optional quests. Um, let's speak with Walthoff first. Level 11 quest called Walking the Planks. Walthoff, a local me at the Mirror Planks, wants you to help deliver the goods that have been unloaded at the pier. Ah, oh, perfect. You're just in time to help deliver some goods that arrived not moments ago. Allow me to double check my manifest. <clears throat> now listen carefully. Take the suit of plate mail to Daronat. He's the god you see right over there. The Montoy beans belong to Kelly, and the smoked crayfish balls belong to my friend Berth here. That's it for this load. A strapping adventure like you should barely work up sweat, am I right? The cargo you're looking for hasn't moved since they unloaded up there at the end of the pier. Much obliged. Yeah, so we're going to put in a little hard labor. So, I don't think there's any difficulty with you taking all three items at once. In fact, that's what's expected of you. You have to take them all at once. Crayfish balls, huh? Must be a fun little snack that you can get to consume. Yeah, it looks like two of those, these guys are right next to each other. Let's speak with Bertha and give him what he wants. Oh, there's Darren Merritt over there. One, two, three... No, this won't do at all. I'm sure I heard Wolfoff mention the shipment had... The smoked crayfish balls? Oh, well, thank you very much. It would have been a short afternoon of fishing if this bait hadn't arrived. And so that's one. And here's Kylie. They should be here by now. And she's the one who wants the beans. Hmm, are these the Montoy beans? Praise the matron! It's my job to pick up provisions from the pier and deliver them to the settlements in the area. But I couldn't leave without the beans. Now I can finish loading up my cart and be on my way. Thank you for your help. Alright, so that's two down. So now back over to the pier. And run right over to this side where we find another wood whaler, Daramal. Hmm, you have something for me? Yes, a suit of chain mail, or rather in this case it's plate mail. Ooh, what's this? Oh, my new plate mail. And what would a wood whaler want with metal armor, you ask? Well, let's just say that after a number of engagements with Gaulle and heavy infantry, my mind has been open to the protection such steel encasements can provide. Well, you are wearing chain mail underneath your leather, so why you need plate? Well, I guess we'll never know the answer to that question. Let's just go ahead and let Walthelf know that the people he was asking or wanting to give the goods to now have them. All done, then? Excellent work, swift and sure. Adventurers are such handy individuals to have around. If we leave cargo piled up on the pier, the next crew has no room to unload their shipment, you see. It can be back-breaking work, but someone has to do it. And thus, another 2100 experience points gets added to my total. Oh, and he has another one, but let's talk with Bertha first. Favor for the fisherwoman. Bertha, a local of the Mere Planks, is looking for someone to retrieve her fishing rod from Lilystone. You seem a capable sort. Would you mind running over to Lilystone and retrieving my favorite fishing rod for me? I was happily dropping a line into the water, you see, when I suddenly noticed some ghostly sphere of fire bearing down on me from behind. In a blind panic, I twisted around and flung my rod at the apparition before fleeing back here to the planks. I dimly remember the rod passing straight through those, those unnatural flames and hitting the side of the tent I set up for afternoon naps. It's probably still there, but I can't bring myself to... You'll go in my stead? Oh, thank you! And so, let's do indeed this favor for the fisherwoman. So, Lilystone, as you can see by the little icon, is this way. And we're going to be in a bit of a challenge, because we're going to be passing through as fate, but at the same time, I can also 
make it a point to take out these Arbor Buzzards, which will add to my Hunter's Log total, now that we're starting on page 2 of the log. So definitely we can benefit from getting rid of these guys, but even at level 11, these are tough opponents. But, this one's down. Now we might as well kill off three and get our accumulation. Get our little bonus for the Hunter's Log. And I'm gonna clip your wings whether you like it or not. And the Arbor Buzzards, as you can see, another f form of these feral monsters that will attack you if you even get close to them. Alright, you're down. And now one more to go. Oh, no! Ow! Well, too late, I have to commit to killing off the Hornet Swarm. And this level 11 fate is pretty much sealed off, or its fate is sealed, so even though I'm killing this one off, it won't really matter. And the person fails to complete their fate, and they'll basically get the Constellation Prize. So now, Buzzard, you and I have some business to take care of, i.e. me killing you in order to get my log for the Hunter's Skill, for the Hunter's Log completed for the Lancer's Guild. Yes, once I have done away with you, you shall be adding to my bonuses. And there we go. So, another 2300 points to my experience. Yeah, it's amazing how many different ways you can accumulate these totals for your experience. It really does go a long way. Alright, so since we have no further need of attacking the Arbor Buzzards, we'll try our best to stay away from them, but I do fear that we will have to attack this one that's upcoming. In fact, we're going to have to beat up all three of these if we want to get access to what we want. So that is what we shall do. Get these Arbor Buzzards out of the way, and then move on to retrieving the Fishing Rod. Yeah, you will not be running unnecessary interference on me today, sirs. Uh, getting double teams. Let's hope that things don't go horribly wrong. Gotta make sure you are staying out of my way. For I shall not allow you to fell me. You shall not be bringing my demise today. Alright, now for your friend. Oh. Am I being double teamed again? No, I'm not. Okay, it's just for some reason I wasn't attacking that one. Alright, let's get this last buzzard out of the way so we can move on. Because that would be very nice. Alright, you're dead. Alright, here's the fishing rod. I'm gonna let my HP recover a bit. Because if I have to go into combat because there was mention that I may have to, then I shall do just that. Hold on a second. Yeah. <coughs> Alright, so let's take the fishing rod. Alright, no further combat required. Mission accomplished. So, running back over to where Bertha is so we can return her fishing rod to her. Alright, over one bridge. Over two bridges. Over three bridges. And that's also, speaking of three bridges, that's also the name of a... Um, popular all-you-can-eat buffet restaurants. That It's only open once a week, though, but they also do um, banquets and stuff like that, so they're they're pretty popular. I, I've been there before, but it's actually been a long time since I have been there. All right, Miss Bertha. I have you your rod. Yes, I have it for you. There you go. This is it. Thank Norfolk you came along. I just can't fish with anything else. The volcano and such around here are posed no threat to me, but those flames, I've never seen the like. I wonder if I'll ever build up the courage to fish at Lilystone again. Well, hopefully you will. And in the meantime, 2,600 points more for us. Alright. Walthoff, let's see what you have next. Oh, extra reward here. Sting in a bottle. Walthoff, a resident of the Mirror Planks, is seeking someone to assist him in his work. Yeah, and we looks like we're going to get enhanced armor for doing this. Can I interest you in another job? This one will ask a little more of your skills, I promise. What I need for you is to swat some of those hornet swarms you see buzzing about the place and collect their husks. About four bags worth should be enough. Hmm? 
What am I going to do with a pile of dead Valkin? Well, the sooner you give them to me, the sooner you'll find out. Well, let's take him up on his challenge, because, yeah, these Hornet Swarms, they are right close by. So, yeah, let's go ahead and beat up a bunch of s swarms all at once. And so far, I'm dominating them quite easily. Yeah, your collective stings are no defense against me. Even if you stung me in the face, it wouldn't matter. There, that's one down. Look out, swarm number two. Uh, you're going to be on the receiving end of my spear, my lance. My victory shall be absolute. No exceptions whatsoever. I shall bring you to down, and you shall pay the price for trying to attack me, but of course it is I who provoked you. Regardless, I shall, defe I shall defeat you. Alright, want to try and avoid drawing the attention of the Arbor Buzzard. Never mind. Yeah, I really should have seen that one coming. I really should have. Yeah, so it looks like I'll have to do a little extra killing. Yeah, because that wing cutter is being a bit of a problem. So let's get rid of the Arbor Buzzard then. Get you out of my way so that you are not giving me any difficulties. Yeah, sometimes you just really can't avoid situations like this. In order to get what you need, you have to go through an enemy that's feral. Alright, you're dead. And once again, we have a Hornet Swarm that is being defended by a... Arbor Buzzard, but I think we might be able to escape harm from this one. Let's go. And if nothing else, that Arbor Buzzard is now going to have its attention drawn by the enemies that were coming its direct by the uh, other adventurers that were going its direction. So they've actually done me a favor in here by providing distraction. And that's it. Mission accomplished. Yet yeah, now the Arbor Buzzard sees me and I gotta run. It sees me, and I have got to run. Well, it doesn't look like the quest will be done just yet. I guess it now comes down to what Walthoth does with the plot with the husks. You have the husks? Good, good. Hand them over then. All right here you go. Four bags of dead hornets. <laughs> oh, these are perfect. Hope they didn't sting you too terribly. Now all we do is take some bottles out of a cure. And squeeze these beauties inside like so. And there we have it. A fresh batch of my special sting brew. Yeah, you heard right. Insects in a bottle of a cure to, I guess, give you a bit of a sweet taste, I guess? The branches of Bent Branch Meadows are put in an order for a bottle quite some time ago, but gathering those husks is always such a chore. <coughs> Speaking of chores, would you mind taking this to them as soon as you are able? The last you're going after by, goes by the name of Margol. Give her the sting brew along with my regards. Oh, and I um, apologize for the delay, would you? Well, it just so happens we actually spoke with Miss Margol not that long ago, so we can just hustle right back on over to her, because of course we inquired about going over to the lavender beds and getting some land. But now that we've accomplished what we needed to do, we can now go ahead and bring this challenge to its conclusion. Oh, it looks like Fenea has another task for us. So, we may not be done yet with her, but we're getting closing on 40 minutes now for today, so we may have to, in fact, we are going to take on that challenge tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see what she has for us tomorrow, but for now, the priority is to give Margol her sting brew. And wonder why she has such strange taste as to be drinking dead hornets inside a bottle of alcohol. Yeah, just a bit of a forewarning to all you kids out there. Don't drink alcohol, well, for starters, but especially not with insects that are drunk inside them. Oh, and sorry, you're not the person I was actually speaking to before. You're someone else entirely. Yes, I'm Muggle. How might I... Well, speak no further. I have your sting brew. Ah, the sting brew. At last, I'm aware of what must be done to acquire this, and I'm most grateful to you. Few folk are willing to run towards a swarm of wrathful hornets. Ordinarily, this liqueur is drunk for the unique and not altogether unpleasant stinging sensation it causes on one's tongue. It has, however, an indispensable tool for repelling insects. 
We sprinkled it over the fields where the Geisel greens are planted. Okay, so it's an insecticide. Okay. Thanks to you, the crops will be untouched by the pests this year. I hope one of our well-fed chocobos can return the favor by serving you as a mount someday. And so we will get the 2600 experience, and in addition to that, our option of leggings. Um, these are all level 15 though, so I cannot necessarily use them at this time. But, once such a moment arises... Um, actually, let's take the bronze pieces. They're 100 gil a piece, so we can go ahead and take those. So yeah, mission accomplished. We got a lot of side quests done. And so, with those taken care of... I guess that will bring today to a close, since, um, yeah, we were never able to get to Keitha and Algar, because we were so busy doing so many other different quests, we were never able to help these two out today. But we'll have plenty of time to help them out tomorrow, and so that's exactly what we will be doing. Also, um, since we are aware of another quest from Phinea, oh, it's level 13 though, so I think we're going to pass on that until we've completed these two important quests. Because, yeah, it looks like these two will definitely be taking priority tomorrow. So, we can take care of those. So, at this point in time, I'd like to thank everyone for watching the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. And, when I join you again, we will make it a point to place priority on assisting Keitha and Elgar with their important quests. So, until next time, everyone, this is Matthew at Novora Autism, saying take care, and I'll see you soon.